Let's see, Cochran Ranch, established 1891. Oof. All the water in this trough has boiled away. Oh, holy shit. Susie's ranch house is burned to the ground. Was that? I hear cows moving. This hot house is the only thing still standing. Ow, dang it. Something behind this door is making some pretty awful noises. Uh, is there any way to circumvent this? Because I just put on the hard hat, so I guess I guess this is where I find out if that was a good idea or not. Alright, go through anyway. Looks like somebody was in the middle of fixing a knife. Grab it. Got a varmint skin and knife. Uh, let's see. Oops. Uh, inventory. So I've got my old cavalry saber, which is awesome. Uh, varmint skin. Allows you to collect skins from beasts after combats. Okay. This is a knife optimized for separating varmints from their hides, but my cavalry saber is better. And no. To some folks who didn't realize, or rather to Mark who didn't realize until much later, uh, the varmint skin and knife does not have to be equipped for you to do that. Let's see. These pies were not safe. Whoa! This thing looks angry, you're not gonna make it to the safe without dealing with it. Okay, let's deal with it. Fight, fight, fight! Get the jump on him. Okay. Uh, melee attack, pistol attack, lava fava. Uh, something tells me a pyro bow. Hmm. Hot resistance, fifty percent. Okay, so don't, don't do that. Uh, beam shield, cost one AP, but once per fight. Increase your armor by four. This will not end your turn. Fuck yeah, I'll do that. Woo, armor! I've got a beam. Uh, let's slice ya! Bam! Let's see. Whoa, okay, that was barely anything. What chaw? Ow. I'm on fire. Doesn't matter. Hell yeah, this should be easy. Even with hard mode, I should be fine. Are you sure about that? You defeated the nasty cow skull floating in a cloud of flame. Hooray! Guns. The Cochran family's guns. Grab it. Grab the right. Skiddy doo. I'm the sheriff in this here town. Okay. Skiddy doodly Wait a minute. Hang on a second, let me quick check something. Established 1891, the copyright for making your own damn guide to Boring Springs and its environs was copyrighted in 1890. What the hell? I'm guessing that's just kind of the joke. What the? It's a chunk of wood from a broken hitching post. Grab it. Grab a broken board. I'm assuming that's a weapon. Uh. Yes, yes it is. Speak softly and carry a crude stick. Uh, I believe the term is big stick, my friend. Oh, whatever. Hey, Susie. Found my rifle yet, stranger? Yep, here she is. Susie's eyes well up with tears as you hand her the rifle. And she roughly scrubs her sleeve across her face before any of them spill over. Thanks, stranger. I didn't catch your name. I'm Cristanza. Thanks, Cristanza. Can't rightly say what this means to me. She looks at the rifle for a long moment and looks back at you. She sighs. Well, it's enough wallowing in misery. Time for me to hit the road. If you want me to tag along when you head west, just say the word. Sounds good, Susan. So, because I have the nurse brand whiskey. This whiskey is too cheap for you to even consider with your nurse hands. Yeah. So. Because I know, I know for a fact, this is how you get Doc Alice to let you in. So why will she not? Do I have to select the nurse brand whiskey? No? Okay. A 
Hey, Sheriff, can you help me out here? How's it going? Lean and right. Thanks, Sheriff. Okay. Whoops. I don't know how you spotted her hiding in that mine, but thanks for sending me back my dark horse. Sure thing. Looks like my pale horse made it back safe. Thanks for your help. Sure. Anytime. Thanks for finding my crazy horse. He was eating loco weed again, wasn't he? Not that I noticed. That's all of them. I can't thank you enough. Here's a little extra for you. Thanks. So yeah, for getting back all of the... Um... Horses, he actually gives you exactly enough to buy a horse. So that's actually pretty neat. Afternoon, sir. What can I do for you? Said something earlier about an injury? Yeah, I busted my knee while mucking out in the showroom. Don't ask how. It's embarrassing. I was gonna get Doc Alice to have a look at it, but she ain't. She gave up Doctor. Why'd she do that? Nobody knows. She just shut herself up in her office. Said she wouldn't talk to anyone except Nurse Whiskey. Is that an actual nurse, or... I'm pretty sure she was being sarcastic. See. Okay! Now can I go talk to Doc Alice? Please? Get lost. Offer whiskey. Whiskey delivery for you, Doc. What brand? Nurse whiskey. Your favorite, I'm led to believe. Didn't know she makes house calls. Alright, hold on. You're rattle and she unlocks the door. Into the house. Whoa. Ho! Uh... Hi, Doc. How's it going? Doc Alice looks to be about in her 50s. Her hair is graying and her face is lined, but her eyes are still clear and sharp. If bloodshot. She holds out her hand. Whiskey stat. Give it to her. She cracks open the whiskey and fills a small flask she takes out of her pocket. Then she puts the flask back in her pocket and starts chugging out of the bottle. Geez, Doc, but doesn't seem healthy. Who's the doctor here? Me or you? Okay, point taken. Uh... Wow, shouldn't this be further away from the fireplace? Yeah. Uh, the stove is spotless. Either she's really compulsive about cleaning, or she never cooks. Whoa. Hey, Doc, can I look at your books? Sure, if you want to. Not that they're gonna do much good in this doomed, forsaken hellhole. You should try being less cheerful, Doc. Check out the books. You survey the books on Alice's shelf. They're all medical textbooks except for a few. We through The Legend of Curly's Meat. The book... The book tells the story of a legendary treasure, a massive chest full of premium meat, secreted in the hidden sense, not in the extruded sense, in the western desert by an old cow head, by an old cow hand named Curly Butterfield. Okay. Look through the life and works of Fred Ferguson. This book pur purports to be a Civil War surgeon's autobiography, but flipping through it mostly just finds lists of reasons that drinking alcohol is bad. So it's actually a work of ludicrous speculative fiction. <laughs> At least there are some useful appendices in the back and some diagrams of appendices. Okay. Leaf through the goblinoid tongues of Rhyme. You start flipping through the goblin language book. It's confusing at first, but you eventually get so engrossed that by the time you take a break from reading, several blurfs have passed. You also know that blurf is the goblin word for hour. You have learned to speak goblin, sort of. You get a perk goblin tongue. Speak a little bit of goblin, at least enough to order a beer, which is the important thing. You can communicate with goblins. Cool, make like a tree and leaf. This vanity doesn't look like it sees much use. Green a little. Grab a pair of tweezers and pluck some more of your unsightly eyebrows. Cool! Uh, hey, Doc. Doc Alice continues to pour whiskey down her neck, occasionally stopping to breathe. Uh, is everything alright? That depends on how fast I can get this whiskey into my bloodstream compared to how fast my liver filters it out. And I can't talk and drink at the same time, so... She glares at you meaningfully. So, what's, uh, I mean... So what's, uh, I mean, what's the matter, Doc? What's the matter? The whole world's gone to hell on a hair? The whole world's gone to hell on a horse cart and you ask, what's the matter? Bandits? Cow demons? Dead men walking? Why don't you go ahead and pick one, and I'll drink to that. Dead men walking? You haven't seen it? Corpses and skeletons staggering around like puppets with half their strings cut, looking to take a bite out of the living. Uh, yeah, I actually... There was a skeleton in the cemetery. I was just about to say that. It's nice to get some outside confirmation that I'm not losing my damn mind. 
But how is that even possible? It isn't possible. It goes against everything I know about medicine. Dead patients don't get back up. Patients. Oh. Ouch. Doc Ellis turns away, grimacing. Every doctor loses one now and again. Never get used to it, but... Well, it happens. But what doesn't happen is them coming back afterwards and looking for revenge. That must be pretty rough. Rough? Buddy, I don't think you comprehend the situation. It's not just patients. It's neighbors. Friends. Husbands. Oh. Um. Um. She turns away from me and focuses her attention back on the bottom. Doc Ellis sighs ex exasperatedly. What now? Uh, what's the deal with all the TNT? It's so when I feel like I'm about to go, I can blow myself into bits so small there won't be nothing left to come back. That seems drastic. Drastic hell! No way am I taking the risk of becoming one of those things. Fair enough, I suppose. That, that does make sense. That's actually a pretty good idea. Uh... Well, as good an idea as having six barrels of TNT next to an open flame candy. Uh, do you have any idea what's causing the resurrections? Well, I heard a rumor. Rumor? What is it? It's when you get incomplete information from an unverified source. Uh... Oh! <laughs> what, what, what is a rumor? Derp. Anyway, what I heard is that there's a fella out west that's causing it. A necromancer, they call him. Supposedly, he's sending magic out into the world somehow. Magic like we bean slingers use? I never heard of any bean slinger raising the dead. Have you? Your scowl deepens. That'd be one hell of a can of beans. Hmm. Interesting indeed. What now? Uh, about that necromancer. Assuming he exists, what about him? Well, maybe someone ought to try and stop him. Doc Ellis gives you a sharp look. You? Because I know you ain't talking about me. Why not you? A gray-haired old woman that knows as much about fighting as a squirrel knows about surgery? Did you hit your head in my bar stool, kid? You aren't that old. And if I were gonna pick someone to go against a necromancer, it'd be someone who also knows how about death, but in a scientific way. A doctor, right? Doc Ellis stares hard at you and takes a swig from her bottle, saying nothing. And it sounds to me like you've got plenty of motivation to get the job done, for your friends and... and everyone. She continues to look at you, you can see the gears turning in her head. It beats doing nothing, anyway. It beats locking yourself in a house full of TNT and drinking yourself to death. You aren't even doing any doctoring anymore. She winces and looks away, then shakes her head slowly. You seriously expect me to ride out west by myself chasing a rumor? Doesn't have to be by yourself. I'm heading west too. Tag along with me and maybe we can find the guy and put a stop to him. It's crazy. Impossible. Impossible like raising the dead is impossible? Alice crosses her arms and regards you thoughtfully. Spark slowly brightens in her eyes. Alright, kid. What the hell? Let's give it a shot. Cool! Okay, so now I'm confronted with a problem. Well, firstly, there's one last thing to do. Skadoodly doo! Boink! Hello there! The goblin shouts, I'm Gary! Er, hi, Gary. Gary notices your hat and starts shaking his head violently. Hi! No, 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 no! Evil hat is bad, bad, bad! Please do going. He turns back to his pile of trash and does his best to ignore you, while also watching you out of the corner of his eye. Gah. Well, okay then. Uh. Huh. Well, okay then. That's scary as all hell. Because normally Gary is another one person that you can make your partner, and that's who Mark did. But apparently the goblins know that the hard hat is evil. That's... This... This is not good. Okay. <coughs> okay, I'm not sure what I can do for you. Alright, you sell me a horse? Sure thing. I should warn you though, 
Horses get mighty attached to their riders. Once you bought one, you won't be able to change your mind later. Which one are you interested in? A basic model, the shifty looking dark one, the spooky pale one, or the one with the crazy eyes? Uh, I'm a fan of the dark horse. Excuse me. I don't think she'll let you ride her if you're wearing that hat. She's way too skittish for that. Sorry, you'll have to choose another horse. Uh, okay. I'll be the rider of death. Give me the spooky pale one. Good choice. That's a good horse. If you like that sort of thing, I'll sell it for 1,000 meat. Uh, what sort of thing? You know, spooky stuff. Spooky stuff? I don't want to get into particulars. Let's just say she sets a certain tone. Ooh, mysterious. I'll take her. Thanks. Here's the keys. Right safe. Give her a name. Tina? No. That's a good ghost horse name. Oak Carn. Poker Numpty. Poker Numpty, that's it. It took way too long, but I'm sticking with Poker Numpty. Are you sure you want to name your horse Poker Numpty? I've never been more sure of anything in my entire gaming career. Alright then, poke and empty the horse. It's nice. It's got a nice ring to it. Okay! I almost forgot. Free with every horse purchase is a complimentary map. Thanks. Alright. Whoa. Heard something right in my right ear. Alright, howdy, Braid. Step right up, step right up. Braid's the name and trades the game. Howdy. Alrighty. Free dynamite, I don't know, dick cream, sadly. Um, now here's the thing, every haystock in this game, as far as I'm aware, gives you a needle. I don't know how hard it would be to come across some dynamite later in the game, so I'm actually going to take some dynamite for this needle. Are you sure about that? Braid, which is so not a name, takes your needle and hands you a stick of dynamite. Be careful with this now, you got an item dynamite. Speak softly and carry a loud stick. This item is used in combat. Damage is an enemy in combat and is sometimes useful outside of combat as well. Alright, cool. Oof. So interesting that this hat actually does stuff outside of just making the enemies harder. I'm actually glad for that. Alright. Ride Poker and Empty out of town. Hell yeah. Once you leave Boring Springs, you won't be able to come back. Any unfinished business you got will forever remain unfinished. Are you sure you're ready to leave? Yes. Alrighty then. You've probably horsed her. You're properly horsed and ready to start your new life in the West. All you need now is a partner. <sighs> Someone to share the trail with. Somebody you can rely on for emotional and combat support. Who will you take with you? Take Crazy Pete. Take Doc Alice. Take Susie Cochran. Go it alone. Your heart had smiles at this idea. On second thought, don't leave yet. Um, I'm not taking Crazy Pete, because that would get annoying really fast. Now here's the question. Because Doc Alice is obviously a healer. I don't know how well she'll be against the undead. Susie Cochran is obviously a heavy hitter kind of person. Um, and she's out for revenge against the cows. So, what do I want? I don't know, it would feel weird for me to have given Doc Ellis that like huge pep talk like, let's go fuck up this necromancer and then not take her along. Whereas Susie already plans to head west with or without me. So I think I'll have to go with Doc Ellis. You knock on Alice's door and tell her it's time to go. Hit the trail! Oh, one last thing before you go. Up until this point, I've been automatically spending your experience points for you. I'm happy to keep doing it, and I promise to give you a nice, well-rounded experience. Shall I keep it up, or would you prefer to decide for yourself where your XP gets spent? You can always change this later in the options. Uh, I'll start spending it then. Okay, you now have the option of turning yourself into some kind of unbalanced weirdo if you want. Open your character screen when you want to spend experience. Check your map. Alright. You'll consult the south... The southeast, the southeast west map of the holster gave you. It only lists two things: the town of Dirtwater and the Manifest Destiny Railroad Company's westernmost camp. 
Alright, Town of Dirtwater and the Manifest Destiny Railroad. Head for Dirtwater. 